Well, good morning. I am Buck. This is Solder Solutions. Welcome to my shop. I've kind of got something unique right here in a way that, of course, it's unique. It's a dry sink. Uh, if, you, if you don't know what that is, as we go along through here, uh, you'll figure it out. It, we explain it. I, I explain it pretty good. But the reason why I'm here at this moment is the footage you're fixing to see was taken uh, uh, three and a half months ago. <clears throat> it was on a Monday, and it was a, I was filmed that day. But that was the day that my wife was headed down here. See, a project like this is where it's handy to have somebody where the camera kind of operating the camera and seeing get close-ups where y'all can see it and this, that, and other. Cause a lot of times, if I don't see, I'll get in the way, but it just makes it more enjoyable for y'all and a little bit of better content. And that was the plan. <clears throat> so my wife was headed down here. Uh, I did some preliminary that morning, and uh, you're fixing to see it. And then we got back after lunch. I guess we got back down here. We took a late lunch. It was about 2.30 when I got back down here. But my wife was headed this way. She was going to work the camera for me. <clears throat> well, about 3.30 is when she fell and broke her leg. Well, that was it until now. Uh, so what you're fixing to see it was what was shot on that day and then when at the end of that I'll come back and then we'll talk some more about what we're fixing to move forward with and all like that because <laughs> I've had over three months to think about this and I and uh, y'all y'all see it since going by over it now because you fix and see it, but I just want to let y'all set the stage for you of what's fixing to happen or what you're fixing to see. Uh, I'm looking forward to this dry sink. I have been for some time. And I've talked about it enough on my, my other channel, Shop Talk with Buck, uh, that they were kind of anxious to, for me to get started on it too. So, so that's what this is about, but I'm just setting the stage for you. Uh, we're fixing to get started, and you, you'll, when I come back, you'll see what I'm talking about. Welcome everyone. Welcome to my shop. I'm Buck. This is Sawdust Solutions. And today we're working on a dry sink. This is back in the old days before you had running water. I got a picture and a, and a thing. I'll show that to you. I got a little work doing it. But it goes on it and you had a structure to come about above it that's missing. Which all of this is missing. I, I hung that on it. This is just like it was when I got it, but it has it come with a, originally with a structure up here with a rod or a dowel to where you hang your wet towels and whatnot. And it come with a, a drawer right here and two doors here. Well, I got to build that. But first thing we're going to do is get everything ready to do that. Like I say, they got this curtain. I'm going to get that off of there. I just set a piece of plywood here. and That base is, well, look at that heavier, but I may have to replace it. Um, of course, I'll have to build something here to for the drawer to set on. Uh, and I'm going to do a serpentine drawer. It's going to have the same shape as the top. But I'm going to have to address some structural issues uh right there to see if they come into play however i know i gotta address that it that leg is split pretty good in the back where the superstructure goes look like they've tried to fix it several times and i guess i give up and threw it away but 
I don't, it didn't come with it. I didn't see it. I don't think it's been with it in years. Uh, on this side, pretty good split right there. I know it's hard to see, but you got a better look right here where they've worked and got screws that's twisted off nails. And, and then, of course, I got to rebuild this and fix it where and we mount that thing, it'll, it'll stay there. But uh, yeah, let me get to tearing this thing down and we'll see if we can't uh, put this thing back to the way it was when it come from the factory. A dry sink. As we clean this out, you can see where the hinge is here and here for the bottom doors. One on this side was a hinge and the hinge right here. So I'm putting it back like it was. I, I found the where the hinge was. But there's Morse is cut right here. I've not figured out what. Yeah, you know, I'm planning on putting a drawer in it. So yeah, it's gonna be some work, but. I need, I'm going to check this structure right here and just see if it's anything to worry about right there. If you look, that dude closed right up. I got spread it apart a little bit, cleaned it out, and closed right up. So I don't think that's going to be an issue. I'm not going to glue it. I'll put me some glue on it before I'm done. I'm going to continue and make sure everything's all right. But before I'm done, I'll spread that back apart and put some glue in there. That way it'll hang in there. I believe that's going to be fine. Well, I flipped her part on the side where I can see what we got right here. These wheels aren't the, the glass I thought they were. Uh, somebody has added them. They're not that old. They're plastic. But they had a, uh, a uh, nostalgic look. So they should come out. Oh yeah. Well, it went uh so yeah the wheels be fine. Let's see what we got here. Mm. There we go. All right. Now, it's broke right here and right there. Yeah, see where it broke right there? What I'm going to do, I'm going to get in there and clean any debris, anything in there out and see if that won't close up. But it's also broke right through there. So that thing has broke this way. So I, I'll get in there and see if I can't uh, glue that back together. If, if I got to be able to get it closed up, then what I might do is get right here and drill a dowel 
in three quarters of the way about her and glue that dowel in there. And that would strengthen that thing up. Yeah, I think it's gonna close up. I'll probably put me a clamp going this way because it is broke right through there. But, but I still think, being this is a leg, it's gonna take some punishment. When it's all said and done and it's staying there, I'll drill and put me an oak dowel you know, from the inside and won't let it come all the way out and you'll never know it. By the time you glue that in there, it should stiffen that up good. Here we go. If you ever packed a wheel bearing on a car, Kind of what you do here. You just you just keep pushing it down in there on itself. Yeah, I can see on this end it's nearly all the way down in there. Yeah, you just push it all the way down in there. Yeah, I'll put that dial in there. And that will uh that'll stiffen her up. Bench is since how it's a leg. Yep, that's what we'll do. And be good and new then. Good as new. All right, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. squeezing out on the inside so I know it's got the good glue all the way down in there but if one more thing I'm gonna need to do they put that foot on there that roller after it was split because now the the uh, the holes all blocked I may have to drill that back out There we go. Now we'll just let that set up for a little while and we'll have that part of it done. I need to go and get the legs done. That way I can get it stood upright. But I'll probably have to drill that thing back out. Let me show you what I'm talking about. It wound up being oblong. But, yeah, we'll just uh, let that set up and we'll just keep moving forward. We'll whittle this thing on out.
I'm wiggling it. There it went. Yep. I think it's only one over here. The other side down here, it's got four or five. Well, we are back to present day. Um... So where we'd gotten to, that's part of what I was thinking about. On that back leg, top of that back leg where that structure was, and they, I guess, kept adding to, throwing nails to it, and all that kind of stuff, and finally give up on it, because nobody has seen it. The, the structure, if they had, they ain't nobody saying nothing, if you know what I mean. But what I've been thinking about is... Uh, well, I'll bring it around here and show it to you. Where I was kind of working on it, and it's just so far gone that what I'm thinking about doing is coming back. So this is an inch and five eighths. If I come in here and get a half inch deep, I take a router and I'll trim that out. Get me a piece of oak, which I found a piece here with a, a similar, similar grain pattern. Now, if I can do this like I'm thinking, I'll 45 them on each end, and you'll not know it, but time will tell whether I can do that or not. But if nothing else, you get a half inch deep here, that wide. What that do, that will give you uh, something solid to mount to for this structure. Um... They use nails, and I, I don't know it. This is actually the good side. The other side is, I mean, look how many times they worked on it. Well, yeah, that he just eats this up. So uh, I'm, I'm gonna, I got some oak that I with the similar grain pattern. So I, I'm gonna fix this right. I laid it down here to where we can get to it. Um, so I made this, uh, took me a jigsaw and cut this out. Cause what I'm using is a flat bottom with a guide bushing. So basically, all I have to do is run that bearing around through there uh, and cut that out. So what I'll do i find the spot I want, and I'll clamp it down, and I'll just run that. That way, the, everything will be contained to within side of that. And then I'll come back here on this side back here and pull that back. Make me a taper, a matching taper. Seems to match up a little better. But anyway, the biggest thing is here, getting it strong enough to uh, be able to hold a superstructure, towel rack. Y'all know what I mean. But anyway, uh, when we get there, you'll see what I'm talking about. Basically, I just line this thing up exactly where I want it to cut, and that barren will keep me within it. Then when I find that spot, I just clamp it down and it prevent an uh-oh, if you know what I mean. We got enough to fix now without any uh-ohs.
Basically, what I've got in mind is actually put the structure back. <clears throat> they pin cushioned this thing in here. It'd be hard for a whole one. But back when this thing, they was having trouble with and all of that. The back when this and they were, had to use it. You know, that thing is. I need to. That so they had to use it. What piece of tape hold that down there? You reckon? Let's see if this will hold it down there. Yeah, let's see if that won't work. Yeah. If it'll stay there. Once I get the rattle on, I believe it'll push it down. So, all right, here we go. I'm going to set the depth. Okay, let's try that. We'll, we'll just work our way down. Uh, let's see. It's a deal. There it went. be able to get right here and see that. That yeah, might be better back up here. Let's try that. So what I'll do, I'll come in here and straighten that out, and then I'll put a 45 on it. And I, I got a little spot right there where I, I couldn't get. But that, that, uh, them holes ain't deep at all now. So they give me a good glue surface. And, uh, yeah, you know, I'll put that 45 right there. Then I'll cut a piece to fit it. I'll try this one. Uh, the grain is closer without one then, but I do have another if I need to. So what I got to do is get this thing uh, at some kind of perpendicular here. Let's 
in order to make a 45, whatever the depth is, is you'd move that same distance back and strike your line. And that will be real close, that, you know, depending on how well you've got it marked. But, but a 45, the vertical, that 90 part, they're, they're the same dimension to get a 45. And what I'll do, I'll take this knife line and that line right there where it meets, when it becomes a straight point between the two lines, you've got it. like anything else you just want to sneak up on it take your time on one of them you have something to look at as you work your way both ways so I like just a little I'm at it here but I like just a little bit there so I'm gonna raise my chisel up just a little okay I think I got it yeah so that's a 45 now. <laughs> now you'll have a... We'll cut that other piece <laughs> to match it. a little spot right there. <laughs> okay then. <laughs> now I'll uh, get my other piece and we will uh, we'll cut it to fit then. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point we probably want to add a little bit to it. I've got seven and three eighths. So I'm going to go seven and seven sixteenths. Give me just a little extra. Because you do not want to cut this short. You'll have to wind up cutting it again. Okay, so what we're doing is we're resawing this piece to a five sixteenths thick. Then we're going to saw it two inches wide and seven and seven sixteenths long and put a 45 on one inch. Even with the adding just a little bit, see that little bitty gap right there? All we got to get do is go to the shooting board on that side, trim it just a little, and that do is sit right down in place. So basically, instead of taking off at the 45, because we want it to sit right down in it, we're going to take just a little off. Uh, so remember, pop it around. We're going to hit twice. Let's see what that does. Because you want to sneak up on this thing, you don't want it to, uh, once you go past it, you're kind of done, if you know what I mean. All right, it still lacks just a little, so we'll just keep working on it until we get it there. And there we go. We got our 
Got her fence because I, I know what's gonna. I made it thicker, and it's, that way I can plane it down to the height I want. It'll blend it right in. All right then, let's go ahead. We're gonna glue this thing on here. Let me do a little practicing first to make sure we're not gonna have a problem. Okay, okay, we'll get her clamped up. I kind of like to practice. If you know what I mean. Tell you what, let's let's do this. Per you want plenty of glue here. Well, that is, that is what we're looking for right there. You want to make sure she push this way against that 45. Uh, because if there's a gap right here, there was a gap right there anyway. So, you know what, that's the end of the board, you know what I'm saying. Get a good clamp right here. And we'll let that set up. And what we'll wind up doing is planing it down to match what we'll wind up doing. And I may, crap, it's almost four o'clock. I may just go ahead and call it a day. And we will come back down here tomorrow. And we'll keep going. We, we've got this thing going our way. Yes, sir, we sure do. We've got it going our way. Got good glue squeeze out, all except for right there. Oh, there it comes. So, yeah. Good. Yeah. So, we will try this thing tomorrow. Well, good morning. Uh, Tis the next day. Uh, got this thing slept, set up all night, so you would think that we are good to go with it. So, uh... We will unclamp it. Unclamp it. Remember the clamp it? <laughs> so we're going to unclamp it. Then I'll probably have to take a, a plane. It's a little taller than I actually was shooting for, but better than being too short. But now I can come in there now, plane that down and and uh, we'll make that thing work. So yeah, uh, we got it moving now. Uh, let me go grab a plane. We'll see if we can't get this work down. It's kind of awkward up high like this. Well, I'll tell you what let's do. We'll put us some candle wax right there. Take some of that friction out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. thing about it 
We didn't like that. <laughs> You're gonna be smooth. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. We will get there. Gonna take a minute, but we'll we'll be fine. I'll keep working on that. And, uh, we'll look at it here in a bit. So what we got? We got her all planed down. Surface is smooth right there. Time we put the stain on it. Yeah, we kind of worked it with a plain hint. Uh, you can kind of see right there. You can see where the the joint is, but. Somebody would just about have to tell you, especially this thing being in the back. Sits in the back. Uh, we'll look at it. I'm going to put some stain on it. We'll look at it. Okay, well, what we're going to do is we're going to put a little stain on it and just see. Just see what takes place here. So where I'm working, I've got that back there, and then you remember the gaps that were right here and here, two screws took care of that. It was just, I don't know, they were missing or I don't know, but anyway, I, I squared that away, but I had to fix that before I started this because the time I moved that in would change this. But you see where... It was, it was mortises right here. I went ahead and pulled that out because right here is where the runner's going to be. And here, runner's going to be for the drawer. Well, they put this crap in here. It's, not, it's fine just to stop the hole up, but, well, I was going to need this. So I, I got me some uh, oak. And I glued it in there and filled that up and got it solid again. Uh, down here, so there's where the hinge is going to go. Hinge is going to go. But this is where the piece is going to come across here. And you remember this serpentine is where it's going to be. And what's going to happen, the drawer will set on top of this as pieces of it, it's going to go here I'll probably cut it out of this right here I'm going to make that out but let's see right here that's going away it's going to be an L shape it's going to mount right here and the part will come out here and it's going to come out here my mortise and tenon this piece to it because uh, this is what's going to hold the drawer. Also, it's going to be the divider. The doors will come up to the bottom of it. But anyway, uh, that's where we're at now. So what I'm going to start doing is cutting these pieces right here. And see if we can't get, to, get this area here fixed. In order to get that drawer, we got to have that. And it got to be good and square. And true before and so you can get your measurements get your drawer done so that's where we are right now now that I've got these morses beefed up and took care of I decided I'd cut me a pattern this is a pattern but the thickness of it what I decided to do is do a pattern the thickness that this the real piece is going to be and I went ahead and lined up and put my serpentine on it now the next thing we want to do is cut this off on the fan saw but this thing let's see okay this is about what we're hunting right here and that sticks out about 
And what is that? A little over an eighth, maybe three sixteenths. Uh, and that's about what it, they show. This is the piece, it'll stick out and it'll be the break between the drawer, which will be serpentine, but the doors will be a shaker style. It'll be flat. Uh, but what it is, one, and then this one catches it. So right now I'm gonna take this and cut it out on the bandsaw. And we're going to take our time with it and make a good... So this is thick enough to where you can take a guide bearing on a router and cut the real thing. Because once you get into... See, this is pine. A lot cheaper than this oak. So we've got something here now. We make a pattern out of That way we ensure that the oak will be fine and we can move forward without wasting a bunch of oak. What we've got, we have got that thing stuck back up there. And it's kind of the way it's going to say it. What it is, it's got either going to, first thought I'd just round that over. A lot of them are just rounded over. Some of them got a couple grooves with some beads running through there. I thought it looked pretty nice. However, then the drawer face will be flushed with this and it will stick out. To, to, to be a true divider. See, this will be sticking out past the drawer. The drawer will be kind of inset with that same serpentine. So what I need now is go ahead and make the drawer slides and guides. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to make an L shape. And it's going to set right here. However, I'm going to have to mortise and tenon this together Probably use pocket holes to put it in place because this is something you put together. It's all put together when you go. But that's what I'm looking at right now. So right now, let's work on the drawer slides and guides on each side. Well, as hard as you could think, uh, you know, main thing is safety here. However, if you notice, I've already got them cut. I went through here and cut these. <laughs> One behind the camera never started the recording. See, that's what I was talking about. It's hard to take two because I've already cut them. But y'all see me work with the table saw a lot. But basically, if you can see what I've left here with, that's going to go away. Then that's what I'm going to be left with, an L shape. However, maybe I can remember to turn the camera on for when I cut this out. I'm fixing to do that now. So, holly bum. So by cutting the, in the L shape, the three quarter, and that's one inch, the one inch will go back here, 
and then this will extend past it and now probably do a tenon right here and a mortise right here where they'll join right here and of course i need to cut these to length so uh let me work on that now it has actually been a few days so we had a holiday and some other stuff uh, <laughs> i don't remember where i was at i didn't check the video but let me uh let me pull you in here and we'll take a look what i've got is the the l shapes i know it was somewhere in there but anyway i got them cut for the space in, in right here this is a, a gauge set by to hold it back where it should be once i mount them back there see so this will go away uh right here this right here i've got the of course this is my uh template because i want to use this to uh work that other but anyway this will have the the real one but have the mortise so i am putting here the uh tenon i am probably cut this that back about halfway and then make a tenon right here to receive the mortise there. So I think what I need to do now is go ahead and make go ahead and make the real one. And that way when I get these cut, a lot of times I like to do the mortise and then make the tenon to fit it. To me it's easier to work down the tenon than it is to make the mortise bigger. I've done it both ways and it works. It's just the way I prefer it if I can do that. So what I've got is I have used up all the oh, oak that I've got worked up. What I need is, I'm gonna cut the rough cut, be 26 and a half, which is plenty. Three and a half. This okay. So this one should be plenty. So my final dimensions is going to be twenty six and three sixteenths by three and a half by three quarter thick. So we'll just start with this. Looks like we'll, we'll be okay right here. I've got a template and I've got a rough cut front so what I'm gonna do I don't have any double-sided tape so I'm gonna take the, the this blue tape I'm gonna put, run me a strip through here and a strip through here I'm gonna take the CA glue put me a bead down it activator here and then what I'll do I'll set this with the glue on it I'll set it right up again because I need these two edges 
uh, matching. So I will set that thing right here and that thing should, yeah, that thing should be fine right there. So that's the way I'm going to do it. Let's see if it don't come out that way. This always makes me nervous. I tell you what. I tell you what, let's do. I'm going to make that thing straight in case there's a problem. I don't know. Something's telling me to make that thing straight. So I'm going to go here. Just like that. And I'm going to go here. Well, the other thing, I need to be straight. Same thing here, but I can... What I've got, I got a mark right there. I got to line this edge up too. All right, am I am I there? See, and I'll put this line it right right there and then up. Okay, okay, let's do it that way. Here we go. This one, this one's for real. I got medium CA glue, and I got some this activator. Oh, get low. I'm going to stay away from the edges. This thing will hold. It'll hold too good if you put too much on it. But you don't want this thing to run off the blue tape. Then it will be tough. So I'm going to take the activator now. Spray this side. So I'm going to set that up. And then that will go just like that right there. We'll hold it here a few seconds. So I'll run that guide bushing on that router bit right down there, and it'll, it'll make it just like this one. That's why, if you remember, you take your time with this one, because I'll probably have to... That will work for me too, you know. Doing it that way, you've got a mirror image of your template. That's why you take your time doing the template, because something happens, it screws up. I got room for another one. Or if you have, uh, let's say there's four or five drawers to do right here. And there you go. So I'm going to cut it to length when I get the tenons. Uh, well, here in just a minute, I will dial that in. I'll dial this one in, but I'd rather take this one and dial in and make... I want this, this thing to fit, if you know what I mean. So that's where we're at. Let's go ahead and dial the ends in right now. So what I do to dial this thing in is use my shooting board. 
it's kind of unorthodox right here because of the curve. If I turn it on the back side, catch him right here, because when it rolls right out, they keep this from blowing out. time-consuming but you stand a better shot not running by it cutting it once you cut it too short you can cut it as many times as you want to it'll always be too short just right there I mean and here's where you need to be careful because what will happen you, you'll go by it if you ain't careful so, yep. From one pass to the next, want to be not enough. I mean, it just. Oh, one. I think one more might do it. All right, let's try that and see what we got going on. So, let's get started on, well, we need to get a mortise and tenon working. So, what I've got is these L-shaped pieces, if you remember, I need to cut them off about halfway back. So, I'm figuring the tenon will be three quarters of an inch. So, once I get that cut off, but I'm doing the mortise first. And I'm right in the middle of a three quarters, so it's a quarter inch mortise got a quarter on each side and this depth right here in other words it was the width this right here seven eighths I'm gonna have a sixteenth sticking over where you can't see it so I put it on the router did it with the router table uh, to see if it'll work look like it's gonna work fine so I'll show this one I'll cut the one on the other side and I'll show it to you So I'm three quarters deep, seven eighths long, and I'm right in the middle. So like I said before, I got them cut on each end. I'll just need it. Need to cut these to where they're three quarters, and then cut them off. And then I'm gonna shoot for a just a little better than a quarter, so I can dial it in with the tenon instead of the mortise. So I put the uh, 
the sliders, the drawer guides back in there. I want to, I've got them cut off. Remember, I was going down about halfway, and I did that. And right there is my next thing is to cut this tenon. I have got the uh, mortise in it. Now we're going to get the tenons. And I plan on using the table saw. We're going to try it today. So the next thing is we're going to cut the tenons on the drawer slides. This is a, the part that I really have struggled with because I really don't know how I'm going to film this. All right, this is the orientation. This is the joint we're working on. So I want to turn it upside down and rest off these two surfaces right here and get it first. I like to have it level. If the back one's off with tech, it don't matter as long as this, this surface here matches up. So basically what I need to do then is rest your off so I, in other words i'll need to turn it upside down that hurt then i need to turn this one upside down so now i'm restoring off the, the surface that i would like so basically the the surfaces i need to rest off of this basin is down on the bench so right there See, I need to come off the bottom of that thing to get that one right. So that's what I need to work on right now. I stopped short of that line. You can see that line right there. On purpose where I could pare down to it. But I can feel that knife line, that marking line. So I'm going to set it right in it. Yeah, you can feel it right there. And we're just going to pare that out. close right there. So a little bit right there. So let's take a look at that and see how close we are now. That looks like it, it really oh that thing's gonna work. That thing's gonna work. Yeah, that thing's gonna work. Okay, so it looks like we have got this thing. I mean, it it, it is it's gonna yeah, it's gonna fit fine. Now the router bit left it round. I found it easier to round this instead of square that. So let's round that off right now. Well, 
Let's do a test fit. What do you think? Okay, that, that's, this is the top. That's the bottom. This is the left. That's the right. Okay, that one seems to fit okay. And that one. Yep. So, that is what we're looking for. So I got the mortise and tenon. I got it dry fitting in here. That is just what I was looking for. Now I just need, to, uh, what I'm thinking about doing is taking pocket holes up under and up under and there and there. Same up on the other side. And probably do a pocket hole right here and right here underneath. So that is what I'm thinking about doing, but it that is what I'm looking at right there. I just need to get them lined up to where they are parallel and square. That way the drawer will be much easier to fit. I'm back in here to bench, so what I'm thinking about doing, you've seen where this was in the in the cabinet. I'm gonna do I practice with that right there. I'm gonna do a pocket hole on the top and bottom and front and back on both sides and I think that will do the trick so that, that's I hope so that's what I'm going to try to do is uh, pocket holes I've already got them set I took an off cut and did a little test I like testing with the off cuts and see how it's going to come out I went ahead and laid it on its side. That way gravity can kind of work with me a little bit. But I don't know. That's where it needs to be. But I don't know if, if you see anything right there or not. All right, let's see if I can't run these up. I've got it where I want it, I think. Let me double check. Yeah, that's where I want it. So let me go ahead and run this side up. Oh yeah, she drawed up then. Looks like me. Okay. I'm going to wait on them back ones because it may have to go in and out too. All right, see where, where it come up a little. Okay, I'm going to... All right, let's, uh, let's go the other way. See where that yeah, okay. That is right right there. Ooh.
got to get a light. Hold it. Okay. Okay, it just it just started, okay. Now let's see how close we are this way. Okay, we're we're right there. All right. Now let's check to see if it's square. Yep. Okay. Okay, I think I got her in here now. Yeah, let's get that front piece and we'll try it and see what it looks like. Okay. Let's see if this thing won't slide on here. We're not going to glue it right now. We're just testing. Well, all right. Looks like, uh, other than gluing it, I think gluing it's going to be fine. I thought about putting a pocket hole right there, but I'm thinking the time I get that glued on there, we'll be okay. So, yeah, the, the, the drawer's going to slide right in there across here. It's, and it'll have the OG shape just like it right there, you know, it's like what's on top. And it'll be even with this right here, so this will stick out just a little bit. Then you'll have the doors on the bottom right here. So what I'm thinking about doing is just go ahead and call it right here. And we'll call this part one. And part two, we'll fix the door, the doors on the bottom, the drawer, the towel holder, and the finish. That'll make up, uh, could finish could be a lot. Uh, if I can't get this to match, it means I'll have to strip that down and go over it all. But we'll know when the time comes. But right now we'll uh, we'll call this one right here, and uh, I appreciate y'all hanging in here this long. This is taking a little longer than I thought, but I'm trying to bring the details out. Uh, of course, I'm having to figure it out as I go because I've never actually seen one of these, so I'm figuring it out as I go. But I think this is going to work, and it's going to work fine. Uh, but basically, I'm put, trying to get all the missing pieces and built and put together. And hopefully, when we get it finished, we'll have an, uh, an heirloom here that's been handed down from my wife's grandmother. Wife's grandmother to her mother, then to her. So, uh, like I say, we're going to call that right there. And then, uh, I appreciate you watching. Uh, I will be working on getting part two out. Hope y'all enjoyed this enough where y'all can watch part two. And then uh, we will see you then. How's that? Y'all be safe, and I'll see you on the next one.